This is a quick review of Hotline Miami 2. Wrong number. The long-awaited sequel had some mixed reactions because of difficulty spikes, some bugs, and an ending that not everybody loved. But let's take a fresh look. The developers, Denaton, served up a game that was bigger and beefier than the first, and full of creativity. And once again, the game was chocked full with a ton of over-the-top, pixelated violence, which I'm not going to show here. Let's talk about the story. The story is a lot more bewildering than the first, which was much more streamlined. It follows a lot of different characters whose stories collide or are tangential. The narrative is kind of structured like the film Pulp Fiction, which I've heard it compared to. Which, by the way, Pulp Fiction was this way because Tarantino and Avery, the two screenwriters for the film, were stitching together a lot of disparate ideas, many of which were not originally for that film. They just were written beforehand. Anyway, in one slice of the game, the journalist, Evan Wright, is trying to get a story for his book from Richter, the criminal killer who wears a rat mask. And he needs some favors from the detective Manny Pardo. This seems simple enough, but there's more underneath the surface to all these characters. Richter is motivated by a more personal cause. He's not just a psychopathic killer. Although he's probably a little bit of that as well. Manny Pardo is not what he portrays himself to be to others in his professional role as a detective. And Evan Wright is a victim of his own obsession. Some of the main characters wear actual masks and some are figurative. As for the gameplay, it's absolutely punishing. Harder than the first game. The hardest game I've personally played is probably the original Dark Souls, but this game ranks pretty high up there. The current build of this game is very stable, but there is a bug that if you're off screen and you haven't entered the first door, you can get stuck sometimes. And the first time this happened to me, I couldn't seem to get back in the room and had to restart the third act and got really frustrated and did what any good gamer would do and threw the controller down on the ground and quit the game for a while. But the frustration faded, and I came back to the game and was super glad I did. There's two ways to play a Hotline Miami game. Either your neck hurts after you play because you're all stressed out, or you're in a flow state and you just don't care if you die, and you just try things and you get in a zone. You can criticize this game when comparing it to the first game. The ending, the story, the checkpoints. But I kind of love it. It's super creative. For example, one level has you in a shifting, demonic, drug-induced hallucination with spirit animals. Both this game and the first game are excellent meditations on the meaning of violence in video games. They both have fantastic music. I give this game a 9.5 out of 10.